I'm Green Bay Press Gazette Sports Editor Mike Vandermoss, and with me is a very distinguished guest, Herb Adderley, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and in my estimation, the greatest cornerback in Green Bay Packers history. Herb, welcome. Thank it's you very much. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Herb uh, has come out with a, a book along with Dave Robinson and Royce Boyles uh, called Lombardi's Left Side. Some really interesting uh, information in there, and I wanted to talk to Herb a little bit about that and also about his Packers career. First, Herb, let's start with Vince Lombardi. What was it like playing for him? What did he mean to you as a person, as a player? Well, uh, I have to say that it's at the top of the list as far as uh, my life, my entire life. You know, once I... Uh, came to Green Bay and had a chance to meet him and sit down and find out what he was all about. Not only just football, but about people being a humanitarian. I knew I was in the right place. And uh, I tell a lot of people that I love my father, but I don't think about my father every day. I think about Coach Lombardi every day. And I don't wake up in the morning and say, now, what can I think about Lombardi told me of this and that? It's just something that happens during that day from the principles that he taught us and told us over and over again, said someday after football days, it's going to help you. Preparation, uh, hard work, self-respect, respect for others. Uh, it goes on, positive attitude. It just goes on and on that has helped me to be a better person and uh, live a better life because of him. I know in the book, Herb, you talk about how uh, Lombardi helped the black players on the team get integrated into the city and he really stood up for the black players. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, when I first came here in 61, none of the black players uh, could live in the, within the city limits. And all of them lived outside of the city limits, the few that was here, uh, except for the great Emlyn Tunnell. He lived at the Northland Hotel, which was the hotel that the visiting teams came in with black players and they stayed there so it was no problem. But the problem was that there were no black folks in Green Bay back then and most of the people were afraid, I guess, to take a chance on being the first one to have a black person in their neighborhood or next door to them because they didn't know what would happen because all the civil rights struggles were going on back then and the Civil Rights Act, fair housing, all that hadn't been passed and nobody wanted to take a chance. So Lombardi found out the housing that we were living in for example, Elijah Pitts, Willie Davis, and I, we lived out on Velp Avenue, and that was out in the outskirts of town. We were about 15, 20 minutes from Lambeau. And we had a one-bedroom apartment, and then on the other side of the building was the exterminator, who had all these toxic stuff in there to kill rats and roaches, you name it. In fact, he had a big uh, plastic rat hanging in the window. You know, that kind of scared me every time I went home and looking at this rat in the window. But it was like one bedroom. Uh, Willie Davis had the bedroom. Uh, Elijah Pitts and I flip a coin to see who could sleep on the sofa. And the losers slept on a cot in the kitchen. And Lombardi found out about us, the three of us, you know, living under those conditions, and said, we'd have to do something about this, you know. So he went to uh, the real estate people, mainly Dominic Olenicek, and said, listen, if the black players are going to be a part of the Green Bay Packers and help this team to win, we're going to have to get decent housing, fair housing for them to live. And that's how he slowly, my following year in 62, we were able to live within the city limits. And he quietly integrated while all the struggles was going on outside of Green Bay and all the big cities in the country with, you know, blacks and whites and trying to get the right to vote. People lost their lives. They put everything on the line just to get the right to vote, not to live somewhere, just to get the right to vote, whereas Lombardi did it quietly. And that helped to integrate the city of Green Bay. And now, 50 years later or more, there are black folks living in Green Bay who have nothing to do with football, and they're living here because of what Lombardi did way back, and they don't know anything about it. So I wanted to bring that out in the book to show what he did to help to integrate the city and also mention the fact that his tolerance for racism was zero, and he felt as though any type of discrimination was wrong, and I believe that also.